building a home lab virtual server in a nook. Quick and dirty. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So no hacker lab would be complete without a virtualization system. Without a hockey puck. Without a hockey puck. And we're <laughs> going to turn this single hockey puck into probably about 16 hockey pucks. Oh, 16. Oh, so we're going to build a cluster uh, of hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Beowulf cluster of hack, uh, hockey pucks today on Hack 5. Uh, th <laughs> that's the idea. It's, um, essentially, this Intel NUC is a fantastic little inexpensive piece of hardware. We went over right. the ins and outs uh, last week. And today, we're going to be setting it up with some open source virtualization so that we can run multiple machines on that instead hey. of having to have a different physical box for every little thing we want to do. And uh, you chose Zen Server. I did. There are a lot of virtualization options out there. Yeah. And a lot of people have mentioned like ones that I didn't realize existed. Uh, I've talked a little bit about uh, in the past OpenVZ or KVM, which are two of my other favorites. The reason we're going with Zen is because of the versatility. Mm -hmm. I can run any operating system, not just Linux. And That's cool. uh, as we're developing pe uh, labs for pen tests with Hack 5, yeah. we're going to need a mixed variety of Windows servers and Linux servers and who knows what else. So it makes sense, especially for us to just run Zen server, open source. Right. And so the concept today is what we're going to be doing is building this is. Uh, this, I'm going to walk you through essentially what I do when I set up my little lab in my office, right? This is uh, not the one that we're going to be using for the, the Hack5 labs. Uh, this is just kind of like to show you a taste of like how you can take any piece of hardware, not even Intel Nook, but any t piece of hardware, and just toss this uh, open source software on it and immediately have yourself a hypervisor setup mm. that you can start running lots of different machines on uh, mm. and, and very standalone. You right. know, I do have a spare computer in the garage that I can totally put a server on. Well, there you go. Now that I'm going to know how to put one on there. And run multiple servers, right? Because yeah. that's really important. It's, it's Especially in pen tests with Hack 5, we're going to be doing lots of different you know, things. We're exploiting different Windows boxes. We're going to need to create a virtual environment. We're going to need to create lots of different machines for us to audit. Uh, so we're going to run that. So don't do that. You're so like we, we, we stuck it on a USB. Yes. <laughs> Because there's no CD-ROM in there. <laughs> no, what is this? And also What's because you put everything on it. Shut up. And because you put everything on flash drives these days. Yeah. So it's just the little Zen Server ISO that we burned on. Grab the Zen Server ISO, burn it, burn it to your USB using what? Which tool did you use? Um, the one with PenDrive Linux, I think it's called. Okay, cool. <laughs> the I one with the Linux tux. There's, there's also uh, Unit Booten and a few others, but you yeah, know, uh, it's burning a USB these days. So. Yeah. Pretty much simple, just a matter of booting off this guy. So let's come over to our Nook and uh, give it the old three finger salute, control delete. Hooray! Yay, oh. it boots! Let's go into the BIOS there or the UFI. Oh, is it UFI? Mm hmm. And we want to go ahead and choose to boot off of our USB, which in this case is. Somewhere. Whoa. Boot. Boot configuration? Oh, mm -hmm. priority. Ah, here we go. So there's our USB. We want to move it up. So is it page up? Is it uh, cancel? <laughs> this would be easier with a mouse. Update BIOS says F7. Hmm. Load, D no, save and exit. Plus, Next minus, item. there we go. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> there. There. OK. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. And Hardest one... part of the entire install <laughs> you, know, you just witnessed. This would be easier with a mouse. It would also be easier if I weren't using a DOS keyboard. Oh, um, yeah. But that's OK. I know where all the keys are. I'm just like, wait, uh, am I sure that's F8? Anyway, yes, we want to uh, save. So this will boot off our USB drive. And it's a very similar install to most other Linux operating systems. Here we are, Citrix Zen server. Um, we're going to go ahead and let it do its standard install. OK. So you can say it actually extracting the file system and all the other good stuff. It is, it's based on Linux. So what I really love about this is there's a lot of other virtualization options out there. We yeah. were talking about KVM and OpenVZ uh, a couple months back. And 
The trouble with those is that you have to go through the effort, and not that there's anything wrong with this, but you have to go through a lot of steps to configure like CentOS or oh, Ubuntu or right. Debian or whatever the base operating system is, and then install the hypervisor on top of that, yeah. which that's fantastic. What I'm loving about this is this is the quick and dirty, like I'm going to have VMs in less than an so hour. So can you explain what a hypervisor is? Yeah, basically it's, um, it's an abstraction layer of sorts. Basically what it's doing is that this is one physical piece of hardware. Mm -hmm. And typically we would take this and put one operating system on it and then one user would use it. Yeah. Right, uh, But that's kind of a waste when 99% of the time it's sitting there idle. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is install a hypervisor which will essentially divvy up that hardware among uh, the virtual machines. Oh, so the okay. virtual machines are different from the hypervisor. The hypervisor is here talking to the hardware and then it's allowing us to create all of these little buckets of virtual machines. It's like a little man in the middle. It's just kind of. Kind <laughs> Except of, yeah. not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a better explanation out there. We're going to go with the US keyboard. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and re erase everything on the disk, except the EULA. And at this point, we go ahead and choose where we're going to save our virtual machines. And we're going to go ahead and use the SATA drive, uh, the SSD, actually, uh, which sense. is, in this case, SD uh, A, whereas SDB is the 7 gigabyte or, I guess, 8 gig uh, the USB flash, flash drive, drive that we're yeah. installing off of. And that's an important thing to note here. We could actually install our entire operating system onto the USB drive and then use, say, uh, network attached storage to save our virtual machines. Oh, In this okay. case, we're going to put both the hypervisor and the virtual machines on the same disk because this is going to okay. be a one-off server. And what is this enable thin provisioning thing? Oh, we're definitely going to want to do that. What does it it's, do? Well, first of all, it speeds up when we create a disk. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I want to run a Windows 8 box because I'm testing out some different exploits mm -hmm. and stuff. And um, say I need to give it, I don't know, like a 40 gig hard drive. Yeah. Well, it's going to be able to allocate all of that 40 gigs much quicker if it doesn't have to actually go ahead and, I don't know how to describe this other than to say, like, steal 40 gigs from the disk. Right? Oh. It's because the Windows installation itself is only going to use like eight gigs. Yeah. And then slowly as we install service packs and other mm -hmm. software, it'll expand slowly to use all 40. Yeah. Right? So what I'm saying is I'm just like, okay, you can have this much disk space, but I don't have to worry about provisioning this much oh. uh, as you need it. And then that means that I can have more, essentially you can have more virtual machines um, on your disk yeah. than like I could have, say it's a 500 gig hard drive, yeah. uh, instead of having 500 gig partitions, mm -hmm. I could have 20 hundred gig because they're not all going to be full. Oh, it's, that's it's, cool. It's kind of like dealing with debt in China. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like not at all. It's pretending you have a bunch of storage. Yes, <laughs> basically. Uh, at this point, we have to go ahead and choose a source where we would like to do the installation, and it's going to be to local media. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we could even install this over the network. It's kind of crazy. HTTP? Yeah, <laughs> why not? Why not? Uh, and then we're not going to install any supplemental packs at this time. If we need to install service packs, we can do that through the Zen Manager, and I'll show you that in a bit. And we're going to go ahead and skip the verification because we are pretty sure that the, uh, the USB legit. drive is good. Going to come up with a very fancy and secure password. Mm -hmm. Password is God password. Love. Yes, that one. One, two, three. Um, <laughs> normally, we would want to go ahead and give it a static IP address. Actually, let's go ahead and do that anyway. Um, okay. Paul, let's see what we can so use. This has Ten. to be on our network somewhere, right? This is just a test one. I'm going to use, I'm going to guess, one. 52 and say okay. there's nothing already out there on 152. I probably should have done like a little end map of the do network you, first. Do you want me to map your net? <laughs> map your nets for you? Uh, I'm actually pinging it right now to make sure. <laughs> okay, doesn't seem to be anything over there. That's uh, <laughs> that's good enough for me. We'll continue on. It's uh, 255, 255, 255, for the subnet mask here at the uh, Hack5 warehouse on our lab network. And that's our gateway. OK. And then we get to choose the name of it, Zen Server 2. I don't know. That'll work. Or dash test, because we're going to blow this thing out of the water here in a few anyway. <gasps> oh, no. Give it some DNS servers. Yay. I like to use Google's. And that one, and can I remember another one off the top of my head? Nope, can't. Two is good enough. And then where are we? We're in Africa. Mm, we're in Africa, okay. 
And where are we in Africa? We are in uh, Los Angeles, I want to say. Yes. That's obviously in Africa. Just needs that for the time zone. We're yeah. also going to tell it to use NTP for time. And at this point, we actually have to choose our NTP servers, our network time protocol. And we're going to use the US government, because they are epic, aren't they? <laughs> uh, time. Uh, dot nist dot gov. Time. 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 Thank you. And I think it's also time.nasa.gov. Gob. No, it's ntp.nasa.gov. You can't spell. <laughs> Thank you. I can't spell. It's OK. It's the DOS keyboard. Yeah, sure. And then finally, we say, yes, let's go ahead and install the server. Hurry, test bars. And that's it, quick and painless. Boom, all we have to do now is reboot, unplug our USB drive, and we're good to go. Yay! We now have a Zen server. Ha ha! How quick was that? You see what I'm talking about? I, I really like it for just being able to quickly spool up some new goodness. It's gonna reboot off of the MSATA okay. now. So now what are we gonna do? There we go. And Can we <laughs> well, put things on Well, here, now? here, take a look at the, the boot. There's, there's not much to it. You get the pretty splash screen. Yep. And then you'll see here, oh, And there we go. That's it. Yay! Not much to it. In fact, here we can pretty much just see the status and what's going on with its network, yeah. and we can see the virtual so machines. So here's basically just where you configure it. Well, kind Although of. Although this is supposed to be like headless, right? It is supposed to be headless. Uh, so we actually, for the most part, don't even need to touch this. Yeah. Uh, you'll see if they even go into virtual machines, I can see all of the VMs running on this host. And there aren't any. But you'll notice, I don't get the option to create a virtual machine from in here. Oh. You know, I can change a few technical settings. Yeah. But mainly, this is the beautiful thing, I don't actually need to get to this. Uh, all of the administration is actually done through a piece of software called Zen Center. Oh. Um, we're going to touch on later some open source alternatives, some other ways to do this. Oh, is this not open, open source? Well, no, it is. But the problem is it's Windows centric. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So if you're running Linux and you don't want to have to, the chicken and the egg, you need a Windows VM to run this, but you can't create a VM without the Windows. What? <laughs> no, no. There's some alternatives we'll talk about okay. uh, at another time <laughs> when we start really getting into the clustery goodness and setting up NASAs and things of that nature. Okay. Uh, but just for the real quick, getting yourself set up, we now have a Zen server. Yay! Which means we now want to put virtual machines on it. All the virtual machines. And we'll do that after the break. If you've watched Act 5 for a while, you know how much we love Domain.com. We always use them whenever we're registering new domains. And the other day, I was thinking about all the fantastic projects we have going on here at Act 5 in the summer. I mean, including this here Zen server we're building today. And also some of the epic stuff we're going to be doing with drone racing. That's right, nano quads. If you're into the 120 millimeter uh, series, you're going to want to get in on this. And that's why I was so excited when Domain.com told me about the new dot clubs. Because, I mean, it's universal, right? I mean, I've got so many crazy ideas of awesome stuff that you can do with these dot clubs, and I think it's just a perfect top level domain. You see, a dot club, it's universally understood. It's not just here in the United States either. So, if you're building a new business, if you're thinking about the, you know, what's that perfect name for my startup, you couldn't find one better because it's so social. I mean, the internet is all about community and collaboration, what we're doing here. So, why not use a dot club? And so, this summer, I just want you to get ramped up for Hack5 and dot club. And in the meantime, when you're thinking about hosting your website, Consider yourself a dot .club. You can get them over at domain.com for $9.99 a year, and there are still tons of awesome options still available. And get this, when you're over at domain.com, you'll want to use the coupon code HAK5. That'll save you 15% and let the domain.com folks know that we sent you. Matter of fact, get this, if you want to tweet me at Hack5Darren, the dot .club domain that you registered, we're going to go ahead and give you guys some mad props. Send some traffic your way. So, when you think domain names, thinkdomain.com. We're back now with our home lab virtual server. We're about ready to install some all sorts of awesomeness virtual machines. But first, we have to go jump in a pool because that's what you do in the summertime is you get in the pool with all the kids. And I just recently found out the reason oh. why your eyes get scratchy when yeah. you're in a pool is not why? because of the chlorine, it's because of pee. Okay, so Shannon, um, <laughs> we're, we're actually not going to be peeing in the pool, um, but 
the, the, <laughs> the pool as it relates to virtual machines has more to do with uh, allowing us to share resources. Uh, okay. You could think of it like, okay, so we could toss like 16 people in the pool right. and then we'd have a pool party and <laughs> there could be like all of these different beach balls that they could all share and then we, we could share the beach balls among the people in the pool. This is a really terrible analogy. <laughs> It's All right, so a, what is a pool? It's called a resource pool. Uh, essentially, this is one of the really cool things about Zen Server, and it's not applicable to this particular instance where we're just showing you how to spool up real quickly, like your little uh, a single node, yeah. just you know, lab environment, like play in your office kind of server. But we'll come back to this later as we build this out. Essentially, Zen Server allows you to have multiple servers. We could create a whole stack of these nooks, right. and they would all become part of the same pool. And then they could share the resources among each other. Oh, that's cool. And we could actually... Oh, this is totally like when you work at a restaurant and you have to pull your tips. Yes. Everybody... It's exactly like that. <laughs> Except not at all. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and create our first pool. We actually have to first create our first server, which is... What did we say? 1073.31. We made it uh, 152. And we'll go ahead and get that login going. And hooray, Aha, our Zen server test it. has yeah. been added. Okay, cool. And at this point, we can create a new pool. We can call it pool party. We can cr choose who's going to be the master of this pool party, and that's going to be the Zen server test. Okay. And then we can add additional servers, just as we had done before, oh. and then create the pool, and then they can share resources among them. So each of those are going to be the different nooks? Yeah, in the okay. future, when we actually create a whole stack of these guys. Gotcha. Uh, but just for now, quick and dirty, get things going. We're just going to uh, you know, just use standalone. So okay. this is the only piece of hardware, a single node. It'll yeah. be real simple. Uh, at this point, we do need to create some storage. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add some storage. And we're going to need to create ourselves a little ISO library. Now, we've already defined where, say, storage-wise, our virtual machines are going to live. Yeah. And that's just going to be on this, on, on this machine. But how do we get the disk images? So From another computer? Well, uh, yeah, basically. Um, well, you just burned the ISO for mm -hmm. Zen Server onto this USB drive, I guess we could just put a USB drive full of ISOs on this machine. Yeah. But it would be better, especially as we look towards the future, having a whole library of ISOs, those you know, Ubuntu. Oh, so you can and actually Windows. add on to it uh, through a network. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, uh, since we actually have a, a, what is it, a Synology here, and it's, it allows us to do very simple uh, CIFS shares, we're going to oh. choose to go ahead and create our library that way. So we'll choose. So you've already created a folder on the NAS right. for it, all of our ISOs. Right. If I go to, for instance, here, I've got an ISOs folder nice. that, look at that, I got Kali and Friendica and Ubuntu and Windows uh, and all of that cool. good stuff. Okay. So I'll go ahead and say, yes, and I'll give it the server name. In this case, what did I say it was? There. I'll just copy that. Alt-D gets you to there. Copy that and paste it there. And we'll have to log in as Zen Server. So, you know, whatever your permissions are in this case, I've already mm. created that on our little Synology guy over oh, here, good. Okay. which is good stuff. Yay! All right. And so now we can actually create a virtual machine off of that. Our cool. first VM, very simply, click new VM. You choose, what's it going to be? Well, oh, that's awesome. let's install a Ubuntu trusty tar 1404, because I'm a, I'm a TLS fan. And we'll name it Tar. Tarzard. And then we choose to check this out. Boom, there's our CFS awesome. library. Okay, cool. And we can go ahead and choose Ubuntu 1404.2. Well, that's neat. Server. So it pretty much has like a built in installation thing for ISO. Basically, and cool. this is great because it knows what it's uh, what operating system I'm choosing to install, yeah. and it can make all of the best practices as far as setting up the VM so that it will run most yeah. bestly. <laughs> and then we choose where we're going to go ahead and install it to. Since this is the only node in our environment, we will choose to install it to the Zen server test. Okay. We're going to choose how much, how many processors. We're going to go with one processor. It's fine. How much memory? Mm -hmm. It already chooses a gig. We've got 16 gigs of RAM in here. We could afford to give oh. it, you know, many more. It's going okay. to be a server. Let's give it 2048. I don't know. That sounds good. And then where, what, what storage? And we're going to go ahead and choose the local storage on the Zen server. Okay. 
And we're gonna go ahead and let it stay eight gigs. That's fine, we can add more later if we need. And in just a moment. Oh, there it goes, test bar. Yep, provisioning, test creating the CD drive, creating disks, reticulating splines, <laughs> and starting. And we can go over here and you know change our memory and check out our storage what? and all the networky stuff. Uh, but essentially, if we go to the console, booyah, ah. press enter to log in. Okay, oh, sorry, cool. that's the console of this particular machine. If we go to Tar over here on the left. So on the left, you'll see the, these are where all your servers are. Can we call it Reptar? Yeah, and I can go to server and check this out. Cool. Choose English. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, it can, that you, looks there so can good. be some funky stuff here and there. <laughs> Set it to scale. And we can go ahead and actually proceed with our Ubuntu installation. Hey, how cool is that? How surprisingly easy. Yes, we can even like undock wow. this and now I've got it in a totally separate window. Hooray. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, it's, it's all, it's, uh, I mean, I just wanted to show you the like real quick and simple with just one knock before yeah. we dive into, because now it's gonna make so much more sense. Now you're familiar yeah. with it. Now I encourage you to go and try this and build your own. In fact, you don't even need a Nook. Uh, there is an entire hcl.zenserver.org. This is the hardware compatibility oh, wow. list where you can see all of the different you know, storage devices that are supported, all the different network interfaces cards that are supported and things of that nature. And you can go ahead. You can and build your own. Yeah, out of Ooh, scraps. Yay. You probably have some scraps in your closet now, so there's no excuse not to build a Zen server, huh? I have plenty of scraps mm. and potato chips. Potato chips. <laughs> we are, we are going to go get our potato chips on, <laughs> but before we do that, uh, we would like to thank you once again for joining us here on Hack5. Uh, we've got a lot going on right now between pen tests with Hack5, yeah, we gearing do. up oh for DEF CON, uh, which is going to be our 10-year anniversary, which is kind of crazy. We should probably get like a meetup going or something. You guys let us know. Tweet us. I'm at Hack5Darren. I'm at Snubs. And let us know if you guys want to do a meetup at DEF CON. It should be a lot of fun. That um, would be fun. 10 years. Yay. Bring gifts appropriate for 10 Can years. Can we just have a snubs big... Be there. Yeah, cause I like My Little Ponies. Because um, we're going to have a booth, so should we just have like a meetup at the booth? No, <laughs> we, we can do better than that, but we will definitely be at DEF CON and, and having a we'll lot of fun. We'll just take over a restaurant. We'll just take over. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Just Look out, Vegas. We're coming for you. a bunch of hackers just slowly swarm this restaurant and all the what waitresses. We, no, what if we actually did slowly swarm? Like a whole bunch of zombies? Can we dress as zombies? I like that. Even better, <laughs> slow zombies. Okay, yes. we're going on a huge Thanks. tangent here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, feedback at hack5.org uh, where you can let us know what you guys think, of course, in the comments below. You can uh, tell us why this is a terrible hypervisor and we should actually be going with something based on Gen 2. I hear you. Um, with all of that, uh, you can also find our social networks in the places where we hang out at yep. hack5.org slash follow. You can also like and subscribe and all of those good things. And find out, you know, at hack5.org, there's tons of good shows. We've got Mubix, we have Metasploit Minute. Uh, Shannon and Patrick and I are doing Threatwire three times yes. a week, which is epic. I'm so excited it's about awesome. that. Uh, I know that you're doing some amazing things over on Tech Thing Tech with Patrick thing. Norton. Yeah. And I, I'm probably forgetting half the other shows. So <laughs> with all of that. Oh man, we're crazy. Uh, yeah, and hakshop.com. <laughs> Uh, for all of the good stuff mm -hmm. that's uh, keeping this going. We really appreciate it. we got some fun new toys, and uh, uh, yes. Thank you for showing me how to install that. That was super fun. Yes, so now let's blow it out of the water and do it again right. Okay, <laughs> we're let's gonna, do it. Now it's time to get the pool party yes. going. All right. All right, until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Trust your techno lust. First. You can't do that. They have to. They give them the oh, opportunity. <laughs> that's, that's just mean of you. There's got to be some competition, you know? Oh, my bad. Why does it say slow processing? You guys are only doing it in 360p now. <laughs> no! Where's my hat? I miss my hat.